Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have another simpler harmonic motion problem from the JEE main physics test. Now, let's read the problem together and see how we want to solve it. And they were very nice about giving us a diagram. They don't always do that, but it makes it a little bit easier to see what we're doing. It says here that the point A, which is right here, moves with a uniform speed along a circumference of a circle of radius 0.36 meters and covers an angle of 30 degrees in 0.1 seconds. The perpendicular projection P from A on the diameter, so we have the projection of A onto P, the diameter line right here, uh, from M to N, represents the simple harmonic motion of P. So P, as A goes around a circle, P will go back and forth between M and N. The restoring force per unit mass when P touches M will be. So we're looking for the restoring force per unit mass. And that's the key because we don't know the mass of the particle. And we don't even realize that we're talking about a particle going back and forth. Represented mathematically by A going around like this. So imagine we have a particle of some mass going back and forth. And when it's at the end point, when it touches M, what will be the force per unit mass to restore the position back to the equilibrium point. So, what's the principle here? Well, first of all, we realize that the restoring force at the equilibrium point will be zero. The restoring force at the end points will be a maximum. And then if we think about the position equation, we know that x is equal to a, a being the maximum amplitude, in this case that would be the radius of the circle, a times the sine or cosine, doesn't matter, we'll take the sine of omega t, and let's say we don't have a phase angle. Then if we take the derivative of that, we get the velocity is equal to a times omega times the cosine of omega t. And finally, when we take the derivative again, we get acceleration is equal to a, there'll be a minus sign, uh, minus a times omega squared times the sine of omega t. And this port right here will be the maximum amplitude. So a max, the maximum amplitude of the acceleration will be equal to a omega squared. Then we use the principle where we know that f equals ma. We take Newton's law, second law, f equals ma. So in this case, f max, the maximum restoring force applied to the particle, is going to be equal to the mass times acceleration, which is equal to a omega squared. But now, since we're dealing with the per unit mass, we can let m equals 1. So we can say that f max, the maximum restoring force, is simply going to be equal to a times omega squared. Now, a we have that's equal to 0 0.36. So f max is going to be equal to 0 0.36. Oh, that's a terrible looking 3, 3, 6 right there. But what about omega? Well, notice that if it covers 30 degrees in 0.1 seconds, so we can say that 30 degrees in 0 0.1 seconds, then 360 degrees, which is 12 times as much, will be covered in 1.2 seconds, which means the period equals 1.2 seconds, which means that the frequency is equal to 1 over 1.2 seconds, and that omega, which is equal to 2 pi f, which will be 2 pi divided by 1.2, uh, and that would be per second, sorry, per second, because now second goes in the denominator. So that means over here, we have the quantity omega, which is 2 pi divided by 1.2, and that will be uh, squared, and we'll leave the units off to make it easier to work with the numbers. Well, now notice that we have a 1.2 squared here. We have a 0.36 that goes in there quite nicely. So we can say that f max is equal to 0 0.30 times 4 pi squared divided by, we have one left over, 1.2. And then we see a 4 and a 1.2. Let's see here, we can make that a 1 and make this a 0 0.3. Wow, look at that. That works out quite nice. And then we have a 0 0.3 and a 0 0.3. That cancels out. And so we can say that F max is equal to pi squared. Now, I always estimate that pi squared is roughly about 10. 
So if the answer that I get there, one of them is 9.87, that means that pi squared is approximately equal to 10, which is close enough to 9.87. So for me, that's good enough. I bet you that this is the correct answer since I don't have a calculator to work it out. Now I have one sitting right here. Let me try it real quick. Let's see here. If I take the number pi and I square it, hey, I get 9.87. Look at that. But without a calculator, you may not have memorized that. I just memorized that pi squared is approximately 10, and it gave us the right answer. So again, the way we worked it out is, first of all, uh, we have a diagram. We realize that we cover an angle of 30 degrees in 0.1 seconds. That means 360 degrees in 1.2 seconds. The period of oscillation then because we go around circle once every 1.2 seconds, the period of oscillation is 1.2. The frequency is 1 over that, and then omega is 2 pi f. But starting with the position equation, x equals a sine omega t, we get the velocity equation, we get the acceleration equation, so we realize that the maximum acceleration is always going to be equal to a times omega squared. And so since we have f equals ma, a now becomes a omega squared, m is the mass, but since we're doing it per unit mass, we can let m equals 1. So f max will be a omega squared, that would be per unit mass, per unit mass indeed. a is 0.36, omega we found to be 2 pi over 1.2. We can do some simplification, then it turns out f max is pi squared, which is about 10 or the correct answer, 9.87. And that is how it's done.